Good evening, everyone. Um, has been our practice because we have a slightly different process going on because of COVID. I'm going to read the opening statement uh, before we get started so everybody's on the same page. Um, so again, good evening. This is the regularly scheduled April, tw April 28th meeting of the Geneva Planning and Zoning Commission. I am Scott Stocking, Chairman of the Commission. Tonight, for the benefit of those in the audience, I'm joined by David DeGroote, Community Development Director and City Plan and Chain Crew. Virtual attendees may watch or participate in a live stream meeting by accessing the link provided in the meeting agenda found on the city's white website at www.geneva.il.us. For more information about meeting procedures or providing public comment, please see notice regarding the meeting and public comment rule modification, a link to which is provided in the agenda for the meeting this evening. This evening, the commission will host two public hearings regarding agenda item 5A and 5B. As chairman of tonight's meeting, I will guide the public, the applicant, and the commission through the process of the public hearing, which is outlined in the back of the meeting agenda. For, please see this page for further details. The commission will open each hearing and the applicant will provide an opening statement and brief overview of their requests. Commissioner members will have the first opportunity to ask questions and review request and re review their requests. Commission, oh, I'm sorry, and make comments. This will be followed by public comment and testimony regarding the requests. Audience members will be called upon virtually or in person and given an opportunity to comment. We ask that you state your name and address when it is your turn to speak. If your comment has already been made or your question has already been asked, it is not necessary to repeat it. We remind members of the public to refrain from veering off topic and direct comments that are relevant to the requests being considered. Following public testimony, the applicant will have an opportunity to provide a closing statement and comprehensively answer questions or respond to any of the comments made from members of the public. Additional questions or comments may be stated by the commission, but public comment will not be reopened. Each public hearing may then be closed, followed by the commission's deliberation on separate requests. Any person speaking during the public hearing agreed to understand that they will, anything they say will be considered sworn testimony to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Commissioners, please state your name prior to speaking and prior to providing a roll call vote to better assist our record keepers. For example, stocking, yay, nay, or abstain. Okay, so those are the, that's the basic outline of the things that we're going to go to this evening. Any questions? Any Okay, I'll administer oath right now. Um, for those who are going to give what? Did you want to call the order? I can call, I guess so. Okay, let's, for now, let's at least call, uh, call a roll. Flat? Uh, Evans? Evans here. Holloman? Holloman here. Eniskeel? Mead? Mead here. Slifka? Slifka here. Stocking? Stocking here. Moran is absent. You have a quorum. All right, now I'm going to administer an oath oh, since I want to make sure we get that done. So okay. those who are providing testimony this evening, please rise so I can administer the oath. Do you affirm the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? Okay, so um, next item on our agenda is the approval of this evening's agenda. Evans moved to approve. Second, Slifka. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next item is approval of minutes of the April 14th, 2022 meeting. Move to Approve the minutes of the April 14th meeting. Slifka? Evans, second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we'll move into the public hearing portion of the meeting. There are two. Um, we'll start with the first one, which is 5A. Um, it's Valley Val, Aminal Hospital request for a comprehensive plan amendment from single family residential to neighborhood, neighbor corridor commercial 
an amendment to the Valley Animal Hospital preliminary and final plan unit development to allow for the demolition of an existing dwelling unit and expansion of a parking lot. The location is 810 East State Street and the applicant is NVA Valley Animal Hospital. Okay, yeah, so thanks for the rest. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. So the contents of this file include an application for an amendment for a preliminary and final planned unit development dated September 10th, 2021, and a comprehensive plan amendment dated March 14th, 2022, both filed by RWE Design Build on behalf of the NBA Valley Animal Hospital, Inc. This application includes the following items. Taxpayer of record and a permanent list use land use opinion application development schedule project narrative proof of ownership list of adjacent property owners standards for special use request PUD variance requested engineers opinion of probable cost soil testing stormwater permit application stormwater report auto turn exhibit legal description on implied survey I'm oh, sorry about that Final engineering plans, landscape plans, tree preservation plan, traffic control plan, electrical site plan, and photometric plan. The contents of this file also includes a copy of the letter to all property owners within 500 feet providing notice of the application being filed. A certificate of publication from the Daily Herald for the legal notice that was published on April 13, 2022 for tonight's public hearing. A copy of the public hearing notice mailed to all property owners within 500 feet and a staff report to from the Community Development Department to the Planning and Zoning Commission dated April 28, 2022. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, and we'll hear from the applicant at this time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Green. I'm a civil engineer with Engineering Resource Associates. 3 South 701 West Avenue in Warrenville, Illinois, and I represent the applicant, Valley Animal Hospital, regarding 810 East State Street uh, before you tonight. Uh, Chayton, are you able to bring up the uh, site plan or landscape plan? Would you prefer the site plan or the landscape plan? The site plan. So while that's loading up, I can just get started. So uh, the history of this project is it was developed as a plan unit development uh, approximately 2003 uh, for a proposed uh, uh, animal hospital as well as a single family home on the rear of the property. It was quite a unique situation. I'm told at the time, the original developer had some concessions to allow a single family home to remain for a certain period. Um, the good news is, is we're before you tonight because of a success story that the animal hospital has been very successful and there is a, there is a, a unique shortage of parking on this property. Um, the original employee count, I'm told, was two veterinary, two vets and about eight or nine support staff. At this point, we are up to five veterinarians and up to 20 to 25 support staff. Um, and uh, Teresa, one of the vets, is here tonight to talk about more of that in detail at the conclusion of my part of the presentation. Um, so we are looking to relieve an existing uh, horrible parking problem uh, with, the, with the demand and the success of this hospital. There is a lot of on-street parking that's happening uh, on the east side of the property along Simpson Street. This is particularly challenging uh, during the winter months when there is a snow ban and snow removal situations needing to happen. Uh, there's cases of double parking in the parking lot and that sometimes compromises emerg emergency vehicle access and the like. Um, I know the uh, hospital has contacted other property owners in the area to kind of work out shared access agreements with perhaps the owner across the street or behind and those have all been unsuccessful and is one of the reasons we're here before you tonight. So uh, the single family home house that's on the property is a bit out of character and in a little disrepair. Uh, so that will be removed 
to make room for additional off-street parking, which should completely take care of today's demand and also allow for room for future growth. Um, one of the reasons we're asking for one of the deviations in the PUD to shift the parking lot to the south a bit uh, is to allow for perhaps a future expansion on the building. Uh, there is um, about 25 or 30 feet of space uh, between the south wall of the existing building and the north side of the first parking stall. And I can show that over here as well in this area. So we wouldn't want to make this substantial investment in this parking now and then have to redo things in a few years to keep up with demand and growth. Um, the, um, there are some standards that needed to be addressed uh, for the special use and the plan unit development. Those are all written out and in your packet. If there are any questions on them, I'd be glad to answer them. Um, we have worked well and closely with city staff and the city engineering department. We've addressed the standards relating to stormwater management and site lighting and site landscaping. Uh, we are aware that uh, if you choose to vote positively tonight, there are three conditions that are recommended by staff. And I'm here to testify that we will comply with those three recommendations. They have to do with changing out the type of landscaping along the south property line to be 66% um, year-round evergreens uh, to provide year-round screening. Secondly, so most of those plantings also need to be six feet in height. Uh, and then there was a request for a small modification on the lighting and photometric plan. And we agree if it's your flavor to vote yes, that we would comply with those conditions. The, um, the stormwater management is being updated on the property to keep in line with the current city and Kane County stormwater ordinance updates. Uh, there is an existing depressional area located on the east side of the existing home. Uh, that area will be regraded for the parking lot, but we will be providing underground stormwater storage for this project. So we'll not only be replacing and replicating the existing stormwater storage on the property, but, but we'll be adding to it to account for the additional impervious area created by the new asphalt placed. Uh, we have submitted uh, auto turn analysis and final engineering calculations for all of this that I'm speaking about, and it has been reviewed by the city engineering department. Uh, so the one deviation we're asking for is reducing the south property line set back from 20 feet down to five feet. Um, your code does allow this to happen as a planned unit development and we've submitted a landscape plan that will have with the conditions the necessary additional plantings. Uh, the second deviation is the Simpson Street parking lot setback, a reduction from the code required 20 feet down to 13.4 feet. I will note that this reduction of 13.4 is simply consistent with the existing parking lot that's out there today. This is a, this is a carryover from the addition, initial PUD from 2003. And so the, um, the existing parking lot, which is this line right here, that runs north-south parallel with Simpson, will just be extended south. And the reason, so the, I'll point it out here too. And the reason for that is so we can keep the cars all in the line, preserve the 24 foot wide aisleway here, which is required for the city fire and police and to bring the fire trucks through the property and also to provide safe ingress and egress. At that point, that concludes my part of the presentation. I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa to run through a quick PowerPoint for you. Can I enlarge it so I can get the actual, oh, yeah. where's my thing? Oh yeah, let me see. So my name, I'm actually, I'm gonna present instead of Teresa. My okay. name is Jenny Christakis. I'm one of the veterinarians at Valley Animal Hospital at 810 East State Street. That's okay, if we can't enlarge it, it's not a big deal. <laughs> you can start with that and yeah. then just arrow down. Okay. okay. Thanks. You just can't see it on there. Perfect, thank you. 
Okay. So I asked John if I could present just so I can explain, because obviously he's the engineer, but we're the people who live, work there every day and have to deal with the parking. So I want to tell you from my perspective and from all of my coworkers' perspective why I really, really want this. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm just going to go through the history. So in 1960, Dr. William Lovett opened Valley with a small building immediately off the Route 38. So I heard, I have never saw it because it was much before my time, but I heard it was right off the corner. So, and then in 2003, Dr. James Duriga built the current building that we're in today. So the Valley Animal Hospital through the years, the staffing at our clinic in 2003 was two veterinarians and six to eight support staff. We currently have five veterinarians and 23 to, depending on the season, 25 support staff. So it has greatly increased. But the big problem is we have the same darn parking lot, <laughs> okay? So, and obviously each staff, it's not like they're getting dropped off, so we have cars for each person. So currently we have 15 parking spots. Included in this are one handicap spot, and we only allow our staff to park in four of those spots because we need it for clients. That's how many clients we get each hour during the day. Um, the rest of our staff parks on Simpson Street and near that brown house that we are, that's immediately behind the clinic, and that's the one we're proposing to tear down. So currently we park between 10 to 12 cars daily on Sim Simpson Street. So I took some pictures. So this is more recent, but essentially these are the four staff parking spots, and then these, so the same thing here, the four staff. And then this is on the side of the house, so the, like the blue car, the picture on the right, this is not even really parking, but it's just the road right in front of the house, okay? And then this is it, a view looking from State Street at our clinic. Our clinic is on the right, and then the brown house is immediately in the, the back corner here, okay? All the rest of the cars, which I'll show you in a second, are, are on the street here, so it's hard to see. Um, perhaps my favorite time of year to go to work at Valley Animal Hospital is during the winter, because this is our parking situation during the winter. And so if you can see, this is CVS right here. Our cars go literally all the way down to the road because part of the issue is, as you know, when the plows go through, we lose parking spots during the winter in our lot because they can't get it all the way off the road. So this is such a hazard. I can't even tell you how many times, like when you're turning off of State Street onto our street, like how dangerous it is. And so every time there's more than, what, two to three inches of snow, I call the city of Geneva and I say, please don't ticket us because we have no place to park. And sometimes I get a really sweet lady who's like, oh, you don't worry, I'll go ahead and I'll tell the police officers not to ticket you. And sometimes I get someone who says, well, it's city ordinance, you need to get your car off the street. <laughs> so then we pile our cars in so we don't get ticketed. So that's why I really, really want it. <laughs> um, and then this is just during our launch, I went out and took some pictures of the parking lot so there weren't many cars in there, just to give you an idea of how we're parked. So then my other thing I want to talk to you about is um, the condition of the house. The house is an eyesore. It has not been taken care of. It needs new siding, new roof, new um, gutters. So if you can see, this is what we look at every day. So tearing down the house, honestly, would be a huge improvement for that neighborhood because the east side's so beautiful. I would love to just get this down so we can see the true beauty. Um, this is one part of the house. You can see that it's hardly been maintained. You can see that the, um, the gutters need to be replaced, downspouts. I included this picture because this is actually a special picture to me. So one day I was walking into work and there was a piece of brick on the ground in the parking lot that came off of that um, chimney. So just to give you an idea of just the house needs to go. So that's all I wanted to say. I really appreciate your time. Um, I don't know if you have any questions or. <laughs> All right. That's our clinic. That's our clinic cat Murdoch eating one of the doctor's birthday cupcakes. So I thought everyone would enjoy that. So. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. Any questions from the commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I, I don't have any questions, just comments. I, I agree with everything they just said. I, I went out there about 2.30 or 3 o'clock today, and the parking lot looked exactly like it was represented. The house looks decrepit in need of coming down. I was particularly interested in the south boundary uh, for the uh, the variation in the uh, the setback, and the, based on how that the product the project to the south is the multifamily project, 
where they're coming, they're going to just be getting a little closer to the entrance drive. I don't, for, I, I personally don't see it being a problem um, e either of the of the setback issues that or uh, setback requests that they've got. So I, um, I think it was thoughtful and, and, and appreciate you also thinking about potential expansion of the building and not having to redo your parking lot. I think that was uh, it was good to explain that to us up front. I just was wondering if anyone's currently living in the dilapidated house, so it's just sitting there vacant. Yeah, if you come forward, please. So. And I was just wondering who technically owns it. So we own it now. Okay. Um, we just purchased it. What was the date? I don't even know. It was in October. October of 2021. It was previously rented out, which is why it looks like that. So. It's a duplex, so there's two sides to it, and um, mm. no one lives there. They did have renters, but the last renter is gone. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I just wanted to echo that your presentation was very thorough and answered all of my questions. Uh, in particular, I was wondering about the design of the parking lot and the fact that the building looked relatively small compared to the parking lot, but uh, the idea that you're thinking ahead to expansion makes it all make sense. So, no concerns. Okay. Michael? Yeah, really not, not a lot to add, but agree with what everybody said. I was out there as well and <clears throat> uh, saw the parking on, on Simpson. Um, and I think with the the addition of the uh, the the landscaping on the south on the south side is 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 a key thing. Um, although the the house to the south is pretty far away, but you you're going to have headlights pointing in that direction uh, when cars pull in pull in and out of those spaces. So, uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, look, looks good. Okay. Any other comments? Questions? Okay, I'll open it up for public comment. Um, anybody here in City Hall, first off, who want, wishes to speak on this matter? Do not see anyone saying they'd want to speak on the matter, so we'll go to the virtual audience. Anyone virtually who would like to speak on this matter, please use the raised hand tool on your application and you will be recognized to speak. No? Okay, one more time. If you are watching this online and you wish to speak on this matter, please use the raised hand tool on your application. You'll be recognized to speak to the commission. No? So there are no public comments virtually. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Slivka. Motion to close the public hearing has been moved and seconded. Celeste, the roll, please. Okay. Evans? Evans, aye. <coughs> Holloman? Holloman, aye. Mead? Mead, aye. Slifka? Slifka, aye. Stocking? Stocking, aye. That passes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve a comprehensive plan amendment from single family residential to neighborhood slash corridor commercial for, commercial for the property and PUD located at 810 East State Street and subject to the findings of fact contained in the staff report. Does this need to include recommendations? The, the recommendations, I think, will be on the next motion, I think, the conditions. Second, Evans. Jaden, you're looking like you don't agree with that. I think, I think that's fine. Okay. Been moved and seconded for approval. Celeste, call the roll, please. Evans? Evans, aye. Holloman? Holloman, aye. Mead? Mead, aye. Slifka? Slifka, aye. Stacking? Stacking, aye. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for an amendment to the Valley Animal Hospital preliminary and final planned unit development. To allow for the demolition of a single of a, of a residential dwelling unit and expansion of an existing parking lot located at 810 East State Street, subject to the findings of fact contained in the staff report, and further subject to three conditions. Number one, at least 66% of the trees required within a transition yard setback must be evergreen trees. Number two, landscaping in the form of vegetation that will reach a height of at least six feet in height 
at full maturity shall be incorporated within all portions of the transition yard setback. And number three, community development department approval of a photometric and electrical site plan meeting the requirements of section 11-11A-3 of the Geneva Zoning Ordinance and the East State Street Design Guidelines. Second, Slifka. Moved and seconded for approval of the preliminary and final plan unit development. Celeste, please call the roll. Evans. Evans, aye. Holloman. Holloman, aye. Mead. Mead, aye. Slifka. Slifka, aye. Stocking. Stocking, aye. Passes. All right. Very good. So, goes to council. So the recommendations that the Planning and Zoning Commission just made will be considered by the City Council on May uh, 16th, Monday, May 16th, at 7 p.m. here in the City Council Chambers. All right, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the second public hearing item on our agenda this evening. It's the public hearing 5A, it's the Tattoo Shop Amendment. It's a zoning ordinance text amendment to the table of permitted and special uses located in section 11-4A-4 of the zoning ordinance to add tattoo shops as a permitted use within the D-CM downtown commercial mixed use district. The location is D-CM downtown commercial mixed use di district and the applicant is David Wagonar. I believe is how you pronounce your name, of Blackhawk Building, LLC. Jayton, please read the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the contents of this file include an application for zoning, for a zoning ordinance text amendment filed by David Wagoner of Blackhawk Building, LLC, dated March 30th, 2022, including project narrative, support and supporting documents, in addition to a staff report from the Community Development Department to the Planning and Zoning Commission dated April 28, 2022, and a certificate of publication from the Daily Herald for the legal notice that was published on April 13, 2022, for tonight's public hearing. All right, thank you very much, Jay. We'll hear from the app. Good evening. Uh, I'm David Wagoner, uh, Blackhawk Building, LLC. Uh, which is my wife and I. That's. <laughs> uh, I I don't know that I have a great deal to add, other than the material we've provided to you all uh, up to this point. Um, I guess we have some self-interest in this. The the property we have at 524 West State, uh, which is where uh, Firewater Barbecue is at, or Sixth and State. Uh, this particular space in the building has been vacant for just over three years now. Um, previously was occupied by a uh, chiropractor, which worked well. I mean, he, we'd have clients in on appointments, so there wasn't a huge need for parking and that sort of thing. Um, and even with uh, Neil Johnson's efforts, uh, he's, he's done a great job on the rest of the building. I mean, we've had no trouble keeping that full. Uh, the space, you know, we're out of the walking pattern of Third Street. So it's not really ideal for a retail or any kind of public shop like that. Um, it's something I want to get to and drive and, uh, you yeah. know. Um, we've got lawyers in the building, marketing firms, an insurance broker, uh, the restaurant, of course. Um, yeah, uh, we, we tried to show that in other uh, locations around Geneva that have tattoo shops, that they seem to fit right in with the rest of the retail shops. I mean, it's not uh, a glaring you know, crazy place or anything. They're not um, drawing any undue attention. They 
uh, in the one in Willow Springs. It's you know by this nice little development by a coffee house. Uh, let's see which one is it? The uh, Crystal Crystal Lake one is by a toy shop and a dentist and an insurance office. Uh, the Batavia one of the Batavia locations. Uh, it's in the same strip of things as a spa, a steakhouse, and a, a uh, child and family therapy office. So um, doesn't seem to be a, and it hasn't been a problem in any of these locations. Um, the one note I, I would like to add is in the um, information provided to you all, I think from the staff report, um, this is not a relocation for this particular company. Uh, it currently has a, uh, a shop in South Elgin, and this is an expansion because of the amount of business he has. Um, yeah. Um, I know you all are probably aware there is currently a cosmetic tattoo establishment here in Geneva uh, and this uh, particular company company business it's a husband and wife with three small kids the husband runs this shop his wife has a salon in Schaumburg um, and she also does some of the cosmetic tattoo work but does it at the shop here um, also I'm sure you're aware that the state has incredible number of uh, rules and uh, very specific regulations for how the shop is run, how it's set up, the people that can come in. I mean, I guess we all have, you know, visions of drunk sailors coming in or something, but you know, that is far from the case. Um, and in talking to uh, this gentleman, I mean, it's nothing he allows. So I don't think there's any problem there. Um, the health concerns, once again, the state has all sorts of regulations that keep things sanitary and very under control. Uh, all of the medical waste, the sharps, all of that is taken care of by uh, licensed contractors. So it isn't like whatever they've used, you know, gets thrown the dumpster out back. I mean, it's all very controlled. There are yearly inspections by the, uh, the health department on it. Um, you know, um, what else? <clears throat> I mean, they're very, like I said, they're, as I stated in some of the information we put together for you all, uh, I mean, they're very, excited to come here uh, like I said they have three small kids they what they in long term would like to be uh, relocate the residents here also they currently have two of their artists that work with them that are in fact resident they've grown up in Geneva um, so that's that's nice um, and I think it would just add you know another interesting shop I mean Geneva's got so many interesting uh, restaurants and uh, bars and shops and things that this uh, would just add to that uh, I hope we showed in our in some of the pictures we had uh, the wide variety of folks now that express themselves with these tattoos I mean the ones I, I love the ones with the, the little kids drawings you know the dads and such and, um, you know, memorials for, for your family, your loved ones, uh, just daily inspiration things for you. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it truly is uh, uh, pretty amazing, the, the visual images and the, the art of it. It's uh, pretty striking. Okay, are there any questions? Very good, all right. Are there any questions from the commissioners? <coughs> yes, Rebecca. 
Um, I was just curious, um, instead of the, the some um, information was requested early about the difference between a special use and um, the changing the, the, the entire zone, I'm not saying the right word. So I was just curious why you didn't apply for a special use specific to the address mm -hmm. as opposed to a zoning just a, you know a zoning amendment maybe you could clarify my question a little better <laughs> so right oh, if I may. right now tattoo shops are not listed at all in this zoning district so even oh, if there was I see th th there's not a possibility to apply for a special use right now it's not allowed at all in the district okay um, and then I was curious if you had had any feedback from the other business owners in your building. Um, nothing negative. I mean, they, a uh, couple of the people, uh, managers in the restaurant, already have things picked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the shop is open from noon until 8 p.m. during the week. So it isn't like it's, you know, some crazy late night place that, uh, is going to be drawing, you know, when, I mean, they're, they're closed before the restaurant. Um, so it's, it's, it's amazing how uh, normal mm -hmm. a business, given its history and all, is. Uh, <coughs> I think the, the clientele has certainly changed dramatically. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to follow up on Rebecca's question. It's not a permitted use, a special use now, so they cannot apply under special use. But what would be the reason not to request that it become a special use as opposed to a permitted use? Well, I guess that would be up to the applicant. They are requesting to make it a permitted use versus making it a special use and then applying for that special use. Do we have the option to make it a special use instead, and then they could apply for a special use permit? I, I believe that's up for discussion this evening. John? Further clarification <laughs> on Rebecca's question and Mim's follow-up. If we, because that, the rub is permitted versus special use. Permitted is an unfettered right uh, uh, and, and you know, to to have as many tattoos, people can put them in without any kind of hearing. Special use requires us to assess how many there are, the impact on the neighbors, the location within the the you know the business district, the downtown district. Um, I just if we if the commission felt like we wanted to pursue this or consider it as a special use, could we then modify the second request? or the request that this particular user be, be coming forward tonight for a special use approval, or do they have to come back after having submitted a different application? I want to make this as efficient as possible and as cost effective as possible for the applicant. So they would have to come back. They would have to apply for the special use and come back because that requires a public hearing and there needs to be legal notices and publication of that for the special use to be considered. He, even though the, the, the notice was provided for this public hearing as a permitted use, which is less restrictive, arguably. Yeah. Well, so tonight's, the meeting tonight and the uh, public notices that went out were for the text amendment to allow it to be a permitted use in the district. Which would not require then a, an asset specific or a location specific motion and we cannot add that here because that was not included in any notice that went to the public it was in the information yes so. and well and like i mentioned if if we did decide to allow it to be a special use there you know per state statutes and the geneva zoning code, right we would need to put notices out and go through the legal requirements for a public hearing for a special use so, so it couldn't it couldn't piggyback off of what's being considered today. right that's yeah we, uh, if the commission was uncomfortable with permitted use was, was comfortable with special use we, we could change that recommendation in the text amendment tonight 
but the applicant for this situation would need to come back. John, you need to have yours on. I, so. <laughs> well, I think I, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Yes, Michael. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so if it if it was recommended to be a special use here tonight, it would still have to be approved by City Council right. to even accept an approval, or I'm sorry, an application for a special use in the future. Right. There's right. yeah. It it has to be in the books before you can. Any other questions from the commissioners at this time? Yes, ma'am. Not a question, but a comment to follow up on what Mike said. So there's two hypothetical scenarios, neither one of which may come to pass. But one would be that we adopted, we recommended that it be a permitted use tonight. And then it will have to go to city council for approval as a permitted use. And then they can move ahead. The other would be if we were to recommend it as a special use, then they have to come back here again, and then the, again goes to city council. So it's two steps. But I'm wondering if we're really setting them up more likely for failure at city council by sending it as a permitted use as opposed to a special use so that we're not really doing them any favors by trying to avoid the step of having to come back for a special use permit. I know there's not an answer to that, but it occurs to me that we may not, we, you know, we might be thinking we're streamlining it for the applicant and, and perhaps well, we're not. And, and that assumes that we recommend positively the permitted right, right. use. I said the hypothetical. I'm sensing energy here that we would vote and it potentially could be go to city Council with a negative recommendation, right? So it could. And, and one, one more thing, just to mention, if if the commission were to recommend it be a permitted use this evening, that would go to city council where they would consider that, but they could potentially change it to special use. So then come back and apply for the special use, but. If the commission feels that it should be a permitted use and you want to give that a shot, you're, you can do that. So if, if we recommended a permitted use, it went to council and they felt it should be a special use, not a permitted use, it wouldn't have to come back to us to change it to a permitted use and then have him do the application it could just automatically already would be because they recommended it as a special use. Is that what you're saying? You would skip our review of whether or not it should be amended to become a special use. Because they can override the recommendation, correct? Right. So, I mean, the application tonight before the commission is to allow it as permitted use. If right. the commission recommends that for approval to the council, but the council uh, feels it should be a special use, they can make that change and approve that ordinance. Then the applicant would have the right to apply for the special use, which would require another public hearing before this body right. so for a specific have, location. Right. So he could jump to that step. It wouldn't have to come back here to discuss whether or not we want it should be amended to be a special use. That step would already have been taken care of by the council without our input on the special use well, aspect of it. I think tonight is your input, whether you yeah, recommend, but if we recommend it as permitted, it as a or permitted or special. Use, Right. right. You have the ability tonight to recommend it as a permitted use or as a special use. Right. When the sausage is made at City Council, it could go. It could go that they just deny it as a permitted use, and they don't take it the next step and, and consider or discuss or make it a special use, and then you're starting over again with the public hearing on the text amendment as well, right? As a right. special use. Yeah. As a special use. I, I, I personally am not comfortable with the permitted use. So I would be more comfortable teeing this up with city, with the city council to, to seek a special use approval that then gives a clear path to this gentleman to come back for a site-specific special use request. We've, we've had a lot of discussion about what we could recommend as permitted or special, but what I'm not hearing from the commission are the reasons we feel it shouldn't be a permitted use and it right. should be a special use. 
Okay. I guess that's something that would be helpful for the record to okay. elaborate. Okay. I, I've got a couple, or at least one. Well, John, uh, you want to see if there's any public comment before we get into Sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, I think we can go that step for sure. Yeah, we're kind of like already into the mood. So any other questions at all from the commission at this point for the applicant? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. All right, I'll open it up for public comment at this time. Uh, anybody here in City Hall wishes to speak on this matter? I do not see anybody who wishes to speak on it in City Hall. So we will now go virtually. If anyone who's watching the meeting online and wishes to give testimony on this subject, please use the raise hand feature on your application and you'll be recognized. Now, one more time. Anyone who is online currently and wishes to speak on this matter, please use the raise hand function on your application so you can be recognized to address the commission. Nope. So no public comment. <laughs> you can interject now. Because I don't know that I'm ready to close the public hearing, but I think it's it's worth keeping this discussion going. Um, neighbors matter with respect to a use like a, a tattoo shop, I think, is unique enough. And I don't think I'm feedbacking. I'm turned off. Okay. I know I'm trying everything on try, my okay. end, but it doesn't seem to help. <laughs> Arissa, do you, do you know why we have feedback or if that could be corrected? Thank you. Anyway, um, all right. Thank you. A use like a, tat a tattoo parlor or a tattoo shop, I think, is is unique enough in that it um, it brings a different type of clientele, and I think a, some positive and, and, and some and some negative. I'm not. I'm talking about there is perception, and 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 I'm probably guilty at some point of having that perception, but. I know a lot of people that have tattoos today, and I, I don't know if any of my children do, but they, they very well could. It's just not visible. But um, I think it, it matters where a tattoo shop or parlor would be located within the business district to me. I, I, having it at the corner of Third and State, might I might feel different about that than having it at, at fifth and in between Fifth and Sixth on, on State Street, uh, or having all of a sudden, I buy right, right, and having a sixth or seventh shop open up uh, within three blocks of each other, I just think that changes the character of the area, and that would concern me to have one particular type of tenant become prolific, whether it's a tattoo shop or there's probably a number of other types of, of shops. I, um, you know, if you just had, um, you know, I wouldn't want State Street to be lined up with bars, uh, you know, every and have 15 bars in a row or something. I think I like the, the effect that we have different types of tenants, but um, I, I think a special use would be more appropriate because of the impact um, one or more of these could have on the complexion and character of, of an individual block or the district itself. Yes, Rebecca. Um. I think that it comes very close to being discriminatory in a way to say that um, this type of a business is more likely to bring this person or this person to town. I mean, you can look at a lot of businesses on Third Street or, you know, that corner specifically and say, you know, at midnight on a Saturday night, what's happening on the southwest corner of third and 38 i mean that you know that business i mean and not just specifically that business but um i mean i think to sort of make assumptions about the type of clientele or you know will these businesses be popping up all over the place i mean that's for you know we don't have restrictions on how many restaurants or how many this or how many that. I mean, I think um, that that's what 
the town does on its own. It decides which ones are successful, which ones aren't successful. Some go out of business, some stay in business. And that's how those business get, get weeded out to a certain extent. But um, I just feel like, I mean, if, you know, it's not a dispensary, it's not a gambling hall, it's not off track betting, it's um, a respectable business, it's someone's livelihood, it's, it's some kid's college fund, it's, um, you know, I just feel like we run the risk of looking a little bit, not even, not even just about perception, but just, you know, to, to draw that line, to make that determination to say, well, um, we only need one of these kind of businesses where we don't have those kinds of restrictions on other businesses that, 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 are, that are in the permitted use category. Um, and I think that that is, you know, that would be, I just think that would be kind of a shame as a group if we said that, you know, um, that we would draw, draw that line there, I guess. Um, I mean, do we think that, that 12 tattoo parlors are gonna be opening up all up and down Third Street? Probably not. But, um, you know, and with all the regulations and the oversight that, that the businesses have, I mean, it's a lot more oversight than the bars and restaurants have by a long shot. Um, so that's just my opinion. <laughs> yes, yes ma'am. I agree with Rebecca. Um, I think that when the character of a use changes, and perhaps 20 years ago, a tattoo parlor was something different than it is today, it is so widespread that you can pretty much say that anybody who is a Geneva resident is as likely to have use for the tattoo parlor as they are for many of the permitted uses in the area. So I'm not sure we aren't just dating ourselves by saying that this should not be allowed. Things change. But one concern I do have and that I'd like David or Chayton to address is that I have noticed that some tattoo parlors, not all, continue to have uh, a, an appearance facing the street that is um, not really in keeping necessary with the aesthetics of downtown Geneva. And to what degree can that be controlled? You know, giant letters that say tattoo and odd scripts and blacked out windows and that sort of thing would not necessarily fit in aesthetically. I don't think the use itself is a problem. So if it was permitted um, and they wanted to install a sign, if it met the sign code, they could put that on the building. Um, I don't believe we allow neon in the down or just for neon signage um, but you know if there's specific things about an appearance that we're concerned about that might be more appropriate under a special use to kind of put conditions on that use versus if it were permitted and it met the sign code you could have you know that that look with the, you know the letters you're speaking of um, or just the appearance. If it, if it meets, if the appearance of the shop meets code, um, then it's a buy right. And we, we don't allow windows to be blacked out. Um, during remodels and construction, you'll see windows blacked out, but as a temporary. Um, otherwise, you are allowed to do window signs up to 50% of the windows can be covered with signs. Um, so we, we wouldn't have a full blackout of the windows. Um, but otherwise, if it meets the, the, the size requirements and the lighting requirements in, in the downtown district, uh, we can't control what type of font is chosen um, for the sign or and, the content of the sign, what the sign says. Right. And, and for the record, I was not speaking of the clientele per se because I know lots of people with, with tattoos. I was speaking about... Um, just this, the aesthetics, and worrying about. I saw one one of the pictures had a, a neon sign that said "tattoo" vertically in the window on one of the tattoo shops, and I, I just think that doesn't fit. But hearing you say we don't have the ability to do neon without permission or something or a variance, 
that's helpful, but I, I would worry about the aesthetics of, of what the front looks like. And something else just to bring up is that any permitted use on State Street or in the downtown commercial mixed-use district, we don't have really control over the aesthetics of those uses. Yeah. So um, it's just something to keep in mind that we don't have those controls on other types of businesses. So it might be a good question to ask ourselves, why do we specifically need it for this type of use? Um, mm -hmm. I guess that's, it, it's, I guess, a, because you could have yeah. a restaurant. You could have a restaurant come in that, you know, it does everything that we're worried a tattoo shop's going to do, but the restaurant's permitted. Yeah, that's a good point. And well, and I, I think too, as a, a new business coming into town, I mean, I I I don't know this business or what his signs look like at his other location, but um, you know, already being sort of aware of some of the thoughts and feelings of the community. This isn't a business that's going to go out of its way to be ostentatious or, um, you know, bizarre in some way to, to scare neighbors off. I mean, I think that's what they don't want. <laughs> they want to bring people in and be approachable and, and uh, disp maybe dispel some of the myths. And I, I do feel like, uh, I mean, I haven't lived in Geneva that long, but... Um, I know a lot of soccer moms and a lot of people who have plenty of tattoos. It's not maybe the way that it used to be. Um, but I, and I do feel like the landscape of, um, of businesses and, and the excitement around seeing new uses is, um, is changing, you know, it's, um, it's progressing. I, I think that for sure. Yes. One other thought. Um, I know that there's a concern. There was the one letter that came in about the image of the community, which way is Geneva going, that sort of implication that perhaps we're changing our, the tone of the whole tone of the community, which I don't believe we are anyway. But I'm not so sure it isn't a bad thing to continue to have your business district evolve with people's tastes and not be mired always in the in the past and what was the tradition I've seen in my line of work where businesses have gotten stuck with that this is the kind of thing we do and their customers age and are gone and younger folks don't find an interest in coming into that business district because there's nothing new and exciting there for them so I think that's something else when we think about a new permitted use <clears throat> Michael. <clears throat> so, you know, I agree with a lot of things that everybody ha has said. Um, <clears throat> but I think, you know, the, it's, it's, a, it's a large district that's, that's different in, in different areas. And, you know, when you think about and, and John's example, for example, is, is uh, sixth and state, the, you know, the the best place for this type of a use and is the synergy right in another part of this use that might be two or three or four or five blocks away from it. Um, so I guess that's, you know, that's part of the, the you know, the, the question when you look at a district, you know, can you feel uh, if it's, if it's a permitted use, can you feel that it, it makes sense no matter where it is in that district? Um, and so, so that's, that's for me, the, the question of the permitted versus the, the special special use doesn't ultimately prohibit it. It 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 just it just creates a second look. Mm. There's people throwing up on the street at that corner. I suppose to to that point, we do have some uses um, in the residentially scaled commercial mixed use district on Third Street that may be permitted um, by rights, but not in all locations. So there might be language that it's, it's not permitted for those businesses that front on Third Street. It's permitted on the side streets in that zoning district. Um, so that could also be an approach to, to allow it as a permitted use in defined areas of the district as well.
Any other comments, questions? The applicant wish to say anything further at this point? Okay. <coughs> Um, in, in terms of the signage and all, I mean, I mean, we've owned this property now for eight years, and there's been a prior to uh, Firewater, there were a couple of other restaurants, and they looked into different signage uh, possibilities. And I know um, that Geneva has a very tight grip on what they will allow, you know, the size of things, uh, the placement. Uh, we're right across the street from the, the Save-A-Lot and the Ace Hardware. They have signs on posts going up, and I know that, I don't know, we looked into that, um, and I believe that was not allowed any longer. There was some either they were grandfathered in or there was some something that allowed those just across the street from us, but they weren't, even if it was on the, the property, not, you know, on the sidewalks or anything that, uh, and the uh, restaurant, there's a, a water wall in the patio area. And he, the owner seems to have, thought that he had that approved at some point when he did uh, all the build out and he put uh, the restaurant name on the, it, it's not really the side of the building, it's a brick addition that has this waterfall and I don't think it was up more than a week and I got a call saying that's got to go. You can't paint on the side of a building. So I, I don't think uh, the, the signage and you know crazy flying things for big blow up things out front is, I mean, that, that's just not gonna happen. Uh, I mean, these, these folks are very deliberate in wanting to expand here in Geneva. And, and, and I think it's, I don't know if, if clients that they get at their current location are from here, like I said, a couple of the artists are. Um, so I don't think they're going to do anything to what you were saying that's going to you know, make them seem crazy or weird or, you know, um, try to push the boundaries of whatever Geneva has set up for the signage and all. Um, and, I mean, they, like I said, they're, they're very deliberate about their uh, uh, choice here, so I, I think they're going to make every effort to um, fit in. I mean, like you said, it's a normal business. They, uh, I, I know it's it's not necessarily pertinent to, to your decision making, but they're, they're really not going to be changing uh, much in the way of the interior build out from what the chiropractor had, which was a waiting area in the front. And um, I mean, they want to keep it very uh, modern, minimal, you know, not not all kinds of crazy things, and uh, um, so for these folks anyway, I, I don't think that's a real concern. Okay, yes, ma'am. Could, could we uh, talk a little bit more about this idea of limiting it to certain areas within this district? Could you explain um, exactly how we do that and, and what everybody's feelings are on where it would be appropriate and where it wouldn't. Yes, I defer to the commission on, on where they feel it would be appropriate, but a recommendation could be formulated to, to recommend it as a permitted use in the DCM district um, for only properties in, you know, from this block to that block on West State Street or excluding certain blocks, however the commission felt was appropriate. I feel like the, where this particular building is located is one of the more appropriate locations. Um, it's, as, as he mentioned, it's not part of the walk-by retail restaurant row kind of place. It, it's good for a business that's by appointment. Seems appropriate. Uh, I don't know what the boundaries should be. This is a new idea that I 
hadn't really thought right. about it. If you look at uh, figure one on page one in the staff report, yeah. that outlines yeah, the boundaries, up, yeah. primarily um, properties fronting State Street um, from Anderson Boulevard to Bennett Street. Um, and then it does, it does extend one block north mm -hmm. of 38 to Hamilton Street on 3rd Street and two blocks south down to Campbell Street on South 3rd Street. And oh, Chayton's, far, Chayton's pulling it up here. Yeah, it's a little cleaner. Right. Yeah. And down yeah. by the train station, too. Yep. Correct. And on the other side of the river. Okay. And then the other side of the state, yeah, on the, yeah. On the river. So perhaps, and I'm just throwing this in as, out as an idea, mostly because the lines are already nicely there, but what if you had it west of 4th Street, because that's where it narrows down anyway. It's a little kind of a simple place to put a boundary. Um, um, certainly, yes. Are we, um, I'm just curious, ma'am, are you thinking about this because, um, I guess I'm, I'm just wondering how it, you know, like how limiting the geographical boundaries is, is this because you think this is more where the business would fit or because you think it's more likely to pass if we put these boundaries on it? You're very perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get a sense of what we're trying, you know, what we're trying to get to <laughs> because there's a part of me that thinks if we approve it, we should approve it. These bus a business should be able to go where it goes. But then I understand the concern that moving forward with it, and then the city, ca and then, you know, then the, the committee of the whole says no. Yeah. So I just am trying to get a sense yeah, of. Yeah, I think it's just a general <clears throat> feel that, like, that, uh, again, I, I, from my perspective, it's a of the business. There's no, there's nothing inherently uh, about this business business that requires a special permit. In, in a general sense, I yeah. just don't see anything for that, um, because there isn't an, a, an impact that I can see that, like an environmental impact or some kind of thing that like we need to like, or a characteristic of it that is something we need to like. They tend to be large, or they tend to right. be tall, or whatever. There's just there's no physical parameters on this. They can fit just about anywhere, so the use isn't give a. There's no, there's no uh, connection to that. There's no, those are no rational set. So, go ahead, Mim. If you want to correct I me on that. Another thought, though, on that, and I think that there might be a reason to not have it everywhere, um, and that is because of the very characteristics that make it work for the West. It's a by appointment business. It doesn't generate foot traffic. Yeah. And you want to retain your well, prime. I was getting there. Just okay, hang on I'm a second. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go so ahead. I'm saying Scott. It, the, the overall character of the business. I don't see it as it as justifying a special permit because it's just I can't put my finger on something that I need to control, right? Or have an extra level of review. However, that said, however, there is definitely going to be something to overcome within the community in terms of allowing this use everywhere in downtown, or at least in these districts. Mm -hmm. So I think they're, what we're trying to do is fine tune it so that like that doesn't get in the way, mm -hmm. because um, I think they'll come up like well they could just come on Third Street, like that that is not something I'm just saying is that in general if they can come in on Third Street like th that's not something we want to have happen, mm -hmm. and it may go down because of that. So I think again trying to facilitate. I right. think it's a perfectly legitimate use in downtown, just that in certain locations in this town, because of the way we, we view 3rd Street mm. as an amazing resource, that it may stop it just to prevent that from happening. And that's just the reality of the situation. <clears throat> yes? I, but I also think there's something to be said for trying to retain... <clears throat> the key corners or the key blocks for high traffic generating use yes. so that you don't get an interruption in your foot traffic because the next business is one that is not a storefront or not a restaurant 
and it can really be detrimental to the this, the revenue that's generated by the entire block to have those kinds of by appointment businesses interrupt the flow of uh, shoppers or restaurant goers or I would agree with that as well so that is also a concern that we wouldn't want a concentration of those kinds of businesses in any area within the, you know the district so that that is also an issue as you, well. you wouldn't want so I have a question um, are there limits on businesses like CPAs and dentists and lawyers to exclude them from those prime traffic spots? I mean, they're not as appealing. I'm sure the rent and all that makes them unappealing you know, to a certain group. So I'm just curious because in your, like in your building and um, around there, that's where you see the, the CPAs and the um, right. lawyers the and things like that. Uses. Right. Yeah, yeah, more of an right. office use. But there is no specified only west of this street or no in this zoning district there's not um in in the other drscm district there are some restrictions on office uses okay. and the amount of space they could take up on south third street but in the dcm district there's no restrictions okay and again that's trying to address the yeah. issue where we have dead space in a, yeah. basically a retail spot and because no, it's a desirable location, so you have like, well, people want to locate their office there, and then you have no retail. Right. Yes, Michael. <clears throat> so I just wanted to go go back to Mim's example about and just picking, and it, you know, it doesn't matter where it is, but let's say it's Fourth Street. What about the rest of the district? So it would be permitted in a certain area and not permitted in the rest of the area. Would, would the rest of the district be a special use? And I'm just, uh, I'm just throwing those out for. That's, I, I like the idea of the rest of the district being a special use because there might be spaces that are appropriate anywhere. Especially I'm thinking on Third Street of some spaces that are lower level spaces. They can be difficult sometimes to fill and that might be appropriate. Yeah. And you oh, get right back I, to the I, just be a special permit I, because then we're just dealing with the economic and mobility p I, parts of it, and it matters where it is. And if it's in some spot, then like we don't think it meets the criteria. You know, I, I find myself leaning into Rebecca. She didn't use the exact words, but it's almost self policing. You're not going to have. 10 of these because 10 can't exist. 10 chiropractors can't be on State Street, can't, you know, whatever. Um, so I find myself transforming during this discussion <laughs> to, being, to being more receptive. And then I find myself thinking, well, really, there's no spot on State Street, if I look at this, that really even needs to be prohibited. I mean, I, I, you're not, they're not going to be able to afford the rent where Starbucks is or, uh, you know, the jewelry store is on the, on the hot corner. locations in Third Street. Right. They're going to be an infill spot between... You know, Stockholm's and the whatever a it is. A small storefront. Yeah. So I don't know that the self policing aspect of it, and um, it, by the nature, as I study this now, we have two blocks on Third Street that are a different district. So that's the quaintness of Third Street will be retained and sustained because it, it's not part of the district we're it's talking about. That's why we um, did that. I mean, yeah. I would be open to saying special. Use on Third Street if you, if they if you felt that City Council would be more amenable to that, but I'm find myself coming around to to being more comfortable with 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 it as submitted and requested. So I, this is, it's been a good anybody discussion. Else, yes. Anybody yeah. else's comments at this point, Michael? Yeah, I, you know, I mean I I still think there's validity to the to the type of use, especially as a traffic generator, and. Yeah. And consistent with the other types of uses um, yeah. that are that are in an, in a even a part of the district, um, so I, I I do think there's some some value to to preserving that. Do you have boundaries you would suggest? I'm sorry. Do you have boundaries that that you would suggest? Off the top of my head, not not. Not so much, and and at this point, um, but but certainly, I think, you know, for discussion, starting at 
as you said, at 4th Street um, makes sense. Maybe west of 4th Street, there's some, there's some things that make sense there. Um, if you went to 3rd and State and said one block east, west, or south could not contain them or, or was a special use, would that work? Because then you're going to fourth, you're going to second, and m most of the walking traffic is up and down third, and in that four block area east and west of, of Third Street, right? I mean, that's where you get most of your. I could be comfortable with that, but what about the other side of the river? I don't see any objection. No. Of course not. Not at all. <laughs> the, the spaces that we see difficulties uh, filling for retail or foot traffic generating type uses is, is, is once you really get east of First Street and start going down the hill. Um, we've got a few successful restaurants there, um, but filling some of those spaces can be difficult. Mm -hmm. And then you start climbing the hill again once you cross the river. Well, and what I had suggested was yeah. just from 4th to 2nd and from State to James could be, could be a, a small enough and then you're, and then both, then south of that, you're well, you, in front of the courthouse is, is really the history museum, and there's not, you know, there's not much on the other side of the courthouse. But if you did, if you did go to Campbell to the south, then most of Third Street would be, or, all, or really all of Third Street, right? In that scenario, would be, um, would be not permitted. Except the station area, correct? We're talking special. Use permit or not? Per you think saying not permitted or no? It would be no, permitted. Would be permitted. Would be permitted. In the station I, th I think what you're saying is if you went south of state right. by a block, you're saying that then that it, those areas like in that very central downtown would be not permitted or a special use. Not permitted. Not permitted. Not permitted. Or well, I mean, it or could special, be a special use. We might find we might find that it's right. okay where right. the old running store was or something or. Yeah. Either way. Either way, those boundaries sound reasonable. I, I would almost think it. Yeah, I, I be more just, amenable to having it as a special use where we're not allowing it as a permitted use. Yeah. That's fine. I, I guess I just I I worry about sending the wrong message that we think that this business is okay out here, but not where the where this is happening, where we want these specific things to be happening. And I totally understand uh, the foot traffic and we want those businesses to be, you know, to promote that idea. Um, I, it's just, I, maybe it's a, a tough pill for me to swallow to say that, um, I don't know, that I just, I just feel like as a business owner, you know, if, if you want to, you know, we don't have restrictions on a lot of other kinds of businesses, and um, it just it feels a little off to me to say that. But baby steps, if we could get some, um, you know, get it permitted in one area, maybe that could lead the way to opening up the whole thing. But well, and to Rebecca's point, other non-foot shopping or traffic generators, we're not restricting their, their locations at all in this district, right? That's correct. Um, it was something that the, the council explored, oh wow, well, maybe 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago now, and decided not to, to uh, retain that flexibility in, in the zoning district um, to be able to respond to the market and Right. Yeah. And business owners can make responsible right. choices. It's not like chiropractors can't be between fourth and second or something, right? Because. And right. there's and so many have, buildings uh, that have, uh, you know, multiple tenants. You may not see a tenant right. that's around the back, and I mean. We had a hearing last month with, you know, the, the tenant in the back wanting a sign on the front of the building. There's lots of tenants yeah. we don't even know exist, frankly. So. Oh yeah. Any other uh, input at this point? <laughs> I feel like we're all over the place. We, we are all I, over I, the place, I but personally, we are all over the place and to I, some and, extent. And yes. I probably transformed more than anybody else in this conversation. But I'd be fine 
sending it as submitted to city council and letting them see if they need restrictions on it myself and we got it on the record in terms of concerns right i'm 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 siding with rebecca I, I think it should be a permitted use yeah. I, um i close closer to that than i, am I, to I just no. i just yeah, think it becomes chaotic and um non-justifiable to to cherry pick um this is not if it if it is if it does have that kind of input that it impacted it should be a special permit for something that we could put our hands on. i mean i think we've tried to put hands on it but and you really think about it it's gonna the economics and the way the community is is going to police that to some extent mm -hmm. um and if the community and does, and, 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 and if the community doesn't <laughs> like tattoo parlors on third street they won't yep they won't go to their business and I mean, landlords have the right to I mean, police that not police but you know make those determinations as well right i mean in terms of their want. other other well, tenants the they're like the vacancy, well i don't even want to risk a tenant yeah. leaving right. because i've got a another use here that maybe somebody right. would take an objection to right. so i just i think it's just gonna take care of itself i i just can't put my finger on something if, if i thought it was going to impact the, the downtown central district i'd figure out a special permit criteria to it but i can't do it so then it's a permitted use anybody else does the applicant wish to speak on the matter you don't have to but i'm just we're getting ready to close the public hearing so if you wish to come forward yes i certainly understand the concern about third street and all of that um but, but i must say i i think what you're saying about the market controlling things i mean a business like this is not going to be able to afford rent down there i mean that and the landlord you know can make the rent whatever he wants if he doesn't want one in there you know then he can control it that way i i would assume um, right. um i mean we've had in this three years two serious concerns both of which would have required hundreds of thousands of dollars of investment on our part just to upgrade utilities and such to take care of what they wanted and one was a bakery i mean it, i mean the gas and the electric oh my goodness um so yeah i mean i think those those concerns are real uh but i i think <laughs> um, I can't think of any place. I mean, we did a, a fair amount of research looking into different areas that have existing shops, and it, it isn't like there's a dozen of them within two blocks of each other. You know, right. if one's there, then you know that's taking care of things. I mean, I think the uh, uh, demand for it. I mean, he's finding now that he's got enough business and he's ready to expand, and he's making a uh, conscious purchase or conscious decision to uh, uh, come here because of that so all right okay all right thank you sir all right i'm going to ask again just because we're getting ready to close the public hearing so is there anybody here in city hall wishes to speak on this matter do not see anyone anyone online who wishes to speak on this matter please use the raise hand function on your application so you can speak on this matter okay mr chairman i make a motion to close the public hearing second evans moved and seconded to close the public hearing celeste evans aye okay. holloman holloman aye mead mead aye slifka slifka aye stocking stocking aye thank you <clears throat> so direction from the Commission I I'm comfortable putting forth a motion as as requested on this unless we want to add any conditions I'm comfortable with it as, as it is Michael 
So, you know, I, I kind of go back to something actually that Rebecca said and, and combine that with the comments about, about the market, uh, you know, determining what will and won't be successful and, and mm -hmm. starting with baby steps and, um, and, and, yeah, and yes, even in that, the market will be successful, right? If this were, let's just say, uh, a special use requirement, um, the special uses would be approved if, if they made sense, and I think so. So, you know, maybe, maybe there is a way to, I guess I'd be more in favor of starting, starting a little slower than with uh, permitting it by right through the, the entire district. Okay. I could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, well, you know where Re Rebecca and I stand, so <laughs> we're good with a permitted. I, I am concerned about those folks in the community who will be opposed to this because there will be some. Yep. And will they be less up upset if we limit it in some way and more likely, therefore, to have this get passed, you know, I, in, in some form, as opposed to having it just go out to the public as we, it's a going to be approved as a permitted use it will have no say on it and it could be anywhere so while I'm comfortable with it as a permitted use uh, that's just something to think about yeah but I, I just think I mean you know um, you, you're not going to please all the people all the time for sure um, but I, I understand that you know, people can get very vocal and say that's not what this town is about, just like that letter that we read, um, which I am, am sympathetic to that, but I also think, um, you know, that, that, that that's okay, that some people are not going to be happy with everything that's happening in Geneva, and I'm sure there are lots of things that people could say or, or complain about. I mean, maybe they don't like the massage parlor, parlor that's over by Ace or, you know, certain businesses that they're not necessarily in favor of, but um, that's okay. They don't have to go there. You know, I mean, they're not going to be shoved down their throat if they don't want to go to the business, and um, I don't, I mean... I don't know. I, I think you just have to say, like, I'm either comfortable with it or I'm not. And, I mean, clearly I am. <laughs> so. Right. so if we put this forth as submitted, will the city council, absent watching our, reading our minutes or, or watching the, the YouTube, will they be informed that we had some discussion on, on limiting geography? I'm just thinking of tempering. Um, that, that this was a thoughtful decision and we're bringing it forth having discussed effect on third street and effect within you know unwalkable on, on the primary walking areas and everything else will, will they will they understand that yes I mean we can we can make sure that that's clear um, most of the aldermen that I'm aware of do a pretty good job of watching these meetings okay. prior to their consideration of okay. anything that's come before the Commission um, we prepare an, an executive summary for them, kind of summarizing the right. recommendation of the commission. Um, in a case like this, we'll probably include the report because it has the district boundaries shown in there, and we can provide a summary of the discussion along with a copy of the draft minutes right. that Celeste prepares. Okay. I would suggest we, sub, we take a vote on it as submitted and just see, considering that, Michael, that City Council will benefit from all of this dialogue in coming to a final decision, I guess. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it's always the city council is looking towards us for guidance and right. what we think is the correct right. situation right. to go forward with, and that's what we should. We should. That's our mission, and that's why we're here. Right. So, uh, you know. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for a zoning 
ordinance text amendment to allow tattoo shops as a permitted use in the DCM downtown commercial mixed use district subject to the findings of fact contained in the staff report. Second, Evans. Moved and seconded to amend the table permitted special uses to allow tattoo shops at D-CM downtown district. Evans. Evans. Evans, aye. Holloman. Holloman, aye. Mead. Mead, aye. Slifka. Slifka, aye. Stocking. S Stocking, aye. Okay, that passes. All right. Okay. All right, so this item, this recommendation will go before the City Council on Monday, May 16th at 7 p.m. here in the City Council Chambers. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, so next item on the agenda is public comment. And uh, so anybody here at City Council wishes to address the commission online, if you wish to address the commission, please raise your hand so we can recognize you and you can speak to us. Don't see anybody in City Hall that wants to talk to us. <laughs> Which is unusual because usually when they're here they want to talk to us <laughs> um, I don't think anybody online wants to talk to us so we'll move on to other business and I know you guys are busy yeah <laughs> put it mildly yes um, so I do just want to go over our applications that we have coming to the Zoning Commission um, right now we have the Verizon Tower at Oscar Swan. Um, their most recent submittal was acceptable um, per the requirements of their special use permit. Um, so they will be coming uh, before the Planning and Zoning Commission in the near future. First, they will complete a balloon test. Um, I believe all of us were here during the yeah, last the uh, balloon yeah. test. Yeah, the last proposal for a cell tower we had. How do you, do you um, how do you make that publicly known that it's going to be tested? So what we will do I is throw a balloon up, <laughs> a balloon up with, a, with a message on it. Yeah. Thanks, jo thank you, John. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> so we will send uh, notifications out to property owners, surrounding property owners. Okay. Um, there will also be a three by five sign posted in front of the property along State Street. Okay. Um, and then there will also be a, a public hearing notice in the Daily Herald. And then, okay. of course, we have our development page um, right. on the website, so we will... That specifically talks about the balloon test. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have a section specifically dedicated to the balloon test, um, date, time, and place. Um, and then that will be pushed out in a news flash to everybody mm. who's subscribing mm -hmm. to the development page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have multiple good. mediums to... To yeah, notify the public. as long as people are known. Yeah. And then, of course, when the balloon goes up, that will draw attention. Yeah, but. People will be calling City Hall, why is there a balloon hanging yeah. over yeah. Swan? Yeah. Okay. Um, and just based on initial conversations, they plan on doing it, executing the balloon test a little differently than the last applicant. So they're hoping that it will be more successful. So we'll see how that plays out. But obviously, we'll send an email out to the commission and let you, the body, know when. Like the last time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just so that you, uh, the commission can go out and actually do it if need. Do they have a date? Uh, not yet. They're thinking late May at this point. Late May. Okay. Could you speak up, please? Could you speak up? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, we. I guess we turned down the speakers in here because that's what the feedback issue was. Um, so it'll be a balloon test associated with the Verizon Tower at Oscar Swan application. Uh, that should be taking place sometime in May, maybe late May. Um, There'll be multiple mediums to notify the public of when that is occurring. Um, so we will send out those notifications when uh, we have a date, time, and place set for that. And then following, if, if they do have a successful balloon test, um, then the, this, the public hearing will be scheduled. Uh, moving on to, uh, we had 427 Fulton Street uh, setback variations and lot coverage that was that came before the Planning and Zoning Commission at our last meeting that will be considered by City Council on Monday May 2nd okay um, 
that we have Hamilton Place, that, that proposal, um, that applicant is still going through the comments that city staff has sent to them, so uh, they are fine-tuning that and planning to submit in the near future, or resubmit in the near future. And then Fox Valley Commerce Center, uh, they were recently approved along with the Geneva Route 38 Logistics Center, so uh, both of those projects are uh, moving forward in their, their own um, phases. I say they're out there doing stuff. Yeah, in Duke is, yeah. <laughs> they are moving forward. Yeah. Yes. So that, that's it for well, the new development? From me, I, might, I think I'm going to turn it over to David, who might have an announcement on our new um, Yeah. Plan. Oh, yeah, that's the good um, news. We were able to fill the position um, with our, our top choice. Um, awesome. Matt Busing will be joining us, but he won't be able to join us until June 20th at the earliest. He's coming from Virginia, so it'll, ah. it'll take him some time to relocate. Okay. Busing. Don't ask me to spell it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're, we're really excited. Is he a planner or a student? Or? He, he is a planner, um, okay. and he's got a few years of experience, so I think okay. he'll, be, he'll awesome. be a really great addition awesome. to kind of Very jump right good. in. Um, Fantastic. Help us out. And then I think everybody's aware that this is Celeste's last meeting with us. After 23 this, this is not years. Good. She is, she's so found missed. better things to do on Thursday nights. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday night football. <laughs> you're, you're shocked, Rebecca. I am. Like, she was here when I got here, and she has been absolutely fantastic for me. I appreciate, appreciate her a lot. You make my job very easy. Yeah. You will be missed. It's a bittersweet. Here, here. Yeah. And we have not been able to find a replacement for Celeste. That does not surprise me. Right. <laughs> wow. You will be missed. Thank definitely. No, thank you, Celeste. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Um, you done? I'm done. I, I was just going to mention that on last Saturday, I attended the um, Kane County Af Affordable Housing Summit. Oh. Um, David and I were both registered. Um, I would suggest they're going to try to have it every year. It's, it's really worthwhile. I don't think it was life-changing, but there's just a lot of stuff when, you're, when you see it and you see the different agencies that are involved and the different steps that folks have to go through to, uh, to, to realize bringing affordable housing to a community. It's, it's worth being immersed in that for a few hours. So I think um, if, if you, don't, if you did, hadn't heard about it, I'll make sure next time I get something yeah. on it. Um, that I share it with staff and they can get it out was to it with us. the county planning department or it was, was it was put it? on you know what there was a, an organization just initials put it on I can't I couldn't tell you what it was but uh, okay but it was it was attended we it started off with um, a lady who is the Midwest director of um, health or of, of HUD appointed by the oh. president and she spoke for a little bit okay. and then um, different organizations spoke and then at the end there was a developer panel including Tracy Manning from MS Landing right and then the guy who built um, I think it was uh, full circle development they did 1212 uh, Larkin and Elgin and then okay. another developer that does primarily stuff in the southwest suburbs but it was it was it was good and worth worth the time it was the only, the only downside it was on the only 80 degree day and <laughs> Since last year, <laughs> and I was in, I was in a gymnasium. But other than that, it was worth it. I'll make sure that I, I think it should almost be, you know, city officials and aldermen folks need to attend stuff like that. Yeah. I wish they would have it on an evening during the week or something, but they, yeah. they, they didn't. So we get better attendance that way. Probably, probably. I, and then second, um, I thought the discussion we had tonight on the second public hearing was awesome. I, I think it was thoughtful and. And get, I'd love to see the commission engage like that. I just think it was yeah. it was the way we should approach things like that, especially when there's tough decisions to be made. So I think that that, that was encouraging to me. So yeah, absolutely. Well done, everybody. I, I was just going to mention that I saw that Country Village Meets is open. Yeah. Did they come through yeah. here through? It was before my time, but did they get special permits through here? No, I, but no. they but through the city council they did, right? They did, yeah. So they was, are finally open. Yes, they're kind of doing a soft opening, but they're open. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Hmm. 
it's a nice, nice see that happen over there. Yeah, it's be they did a beautiful job with the building. So. Indeed, yeah. Okay, any other new business things? Move to adjourn. All right, thank you, Nim.